Sweep of the Pirates this past weekend. We're ready for interleague baseball. Beautiful day out on the lake. Beautiful day here at Miller Park. And the Cleveland Indians are here tonight. A two game series with the tribe. Brewers are 16 and 6 going back to June 23rd. Jonathan Lucroy has been a big part of that. And a first sweep at home this year. Jason Kipnis, an all star again. He is in the lineup. And the Indians are here tonight. Hi, everybody. We welcome you from Miller Park. Great to have you with us. Alongside Bill Schroeder, I'm Brian Anderson. Sophia Menard is our reporter tonight. The Cleveland Indians are in town. It is Major League Night here. Bob Euchre is throwing out the first pitch. And we're going to have some fun with the movie theme tonight for sure. But the Indians are here. They're playing pretty good baseball right now. Just took two out of three from the Cincinnati Reds. And the guy who's going to pitch against them is Matt Garza. And, Rock, it's been 19 days since he last pitched. Yeah, it's been a long time. The Philadelphia Phillies series back in Philly got a no decision. The big inning has been a problem for Garza. Now, Garza has not won a game since June 6th. That was a against the Twins in Minnesota. You remember, back-to-back -back wins for Garza. That was part of that situation, that extra inning game against the Diamondbacks. He picked up a win in relief. I think everybody thought things were going to turn around for Garza, but the problem has been lack of consistency with location. But the Brewers' starting rotation has been unbelievable, and it's been the three young guys. You got Taylor Young, you got Fires, you got Jimmy Nelson, all getting it done. Now it's time for the veteran guys to step up. It's going to be Garza tonight and Loach tomorrow. Night game, day game. Brewers, Indians. Hottest offense in baseball here recently. The Milwaukee Brewers. Sophia has more on that story. Major League night at Miller Park. Brewers, Indians coming up.
to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Buy Toyota. See where Toyota takes you. Test drive one at your Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. And by Miller Lite, the original light pilsner. Cheers, it's Miller time. Bernard O'Para leading off a Brewers lineup that has been one of the hottest lineups here in baseball. They're coming off of a sweep against the Pittsburgh Pirates, one of the hottest teams in baseball going into the All-Star break. But the Brewers offense is putting together a run lately that they're putting their own campaign to be one of the hottest teams in baseball. Let's take a look at their ranks since June 23rd. Their 16-6 and record, second best in the league, 119 runs, an average nearly 300 at 299. And under Craig Council, they've played 500 ball since he was hired on May 4th to take over for Ron Renneke, a 34 and 34 record for them. And for Council, the offensive production has come from consistent approaches up and down the lineup. Like the lineup is, is produces offense and I think the Pittsburgh series was a good you know we had that game Saturday night where we scored in six straight innings I think and that's one that's hard to do but I think you have to have especially in the National League but you have to have length in your lineup to, to have nights like that and I think that's to me that was a night of an indication of what you know what a lineup with length can produce um, when you can you can, every inning you can put pressure on the other team's pitcher and pressure on the other team's defense and uh, you make it difficult every inning. And I think um, a lineup with length is that's that's you know the kind of nights that you might get. Matt Garza is back from the disabled list. His first start since July 2nd. He'll face the Indians. Danny Salazar with that first pitch coming up next. Looking at Bob Euchre's statue, Major League Night here at Miller Park, the famous movie franchise, giving away Harry Doyle bobbleheads here tonight. Very cool collector's item. And the man who played Harry Doyle, Bob Euchre, throwing out the ceremonial first pitch to his son, Bob. And of course, it was just a bit outside. He did that on purpose, you know. This guy's in his 80s and he can still throw it where he yeah, wants to. Yep. <laughs> yep. On script. So Bob Euchre having a little fun tonight. He's been uh, making the rounds and all good with the Cleveland Indians in town for the first time since 06 to play the Brewers. And here is the Terry Francona batting order. He's got his all star second baseman Jason Kittness leading off, then Francisco Lindor, Michael Bradley. Middle of the order is Carlos Santana, Brandon Moss, Jan Gomes, Michael Bourne, Giovanni Urshela, and Danny Salazar rounded out. 
Urshela and Lindor, a couple of rookies that have given the Indians a little life. Matt Garza has new life. He's back on the mound after a stent on the disabled list with shoulder fatigue. And Rock, his last start was July 2nd. And he's got the Cleveland Indians tonight to try to keep something good going that the starters have been posting. Yeah, he went on the disabled list on July 6th with a right shoulder issue. He only missed one start because of the All-Star break. But, you know, July 2nd at Philadelphia, no decision, six innings, ten hits, four runs, making career start number nine against Cleveland. Jason Kempnis leads off. First pitch in there, strike one. And away we go at Miller Park. Kipnis, one of the best hitters in the game. He's sixth in all of baseball in batting average coming into play. 326 average. And a 405 on base percentage. He is one of the more sought after leadoff hitters. His OPS, you combine the on base and the slugging, he is number one in the major leagues among second basemen across baseball. And there's some pretty good second basemen out there. And when you talk about offense for the Cleveland Indians, it comes down to Kipnis and Michael Brantley being very consistent. They really don't have much of an issue getting on base this club. But driving him in, that's been the issue. Brantley, the former Brewer product, traded in the CC Sabathia deal, and he's turned out to be the best of the bunch of the four that were traded. Ground ball to Segura. And Kipnis is out, and that's how the day begins for Matt Garza. And Rock, how about the Menards Brewers defense behind Garza? And after a normal lineup out there tonight with the right hander out on the mound, Park, Gomez, and Braun in the outfield, Ramirez, Segura, Jeanette, and Lynn from third to first, and Jonathan Lucroy behind home plate. Crew chief is Brian Gorman. He's calling the balls and strikes tonight. Mark Carlson, Ryan Blackney. Trip Gibson on the bases. First of a brief two game series with Cleveland. And basically a day and a half of baseball. Tomorrow is an afternoon game. Terry Francona's Indians coming off a series win against the Reds. They had lost three in a row before their win Saturday night. Then they won an extra innings Sunday afternoon. Francisco Lindor pops this one up right up the pipe. And there is Ramirez. Four out number two. Well, no real pitch limit on Matt Garza, although he did miss almost three weeks on a disabled list. No rehab assignment, so the Brewers are going to keep a close eye on him. As long as he's throwing well, he'll be out there. Don't expect a complete game tonight, but a yeah, good start for Garza. He's going to be facing seven hitters in this lineup batting left-handed. This is a very patient hitting ball club. Michael Brandley is among the most patient that the Indians have. He and Kipnis are the two guys, as Rock mentioned, to try to avoid with runners on base, runners in scoring position. That has been a problem for the Indians. And you get the feeling, Rock, when you look at the way things have gone for them, that guys like Kipnis and Brantley, they're being pitched around a little bit, so they're creating a lot of base runners, although I think a lot of that is a little bit by design. Right. You don't want to let those guys beat you late in the game. But the Indians lead the American League in walks as a team, so they are patient. They don't hit many homers, 13th in the league. But the interesting thing about the Indians, and you know, you mentioned that they do get on base a lot. They're fourth in the American League in on base percentage, but only 12th in runs. That tells you all you need to know about their offense. Bradley. Is the headliner in this lineup, although Kipnis is the all star. It is Michael Bradley who hits third, drives in, runs. He leads their club in runs batted in. Been dealing off and on with the back problem. Now in his seventh year, and uh, he has turned out to be a terrific major league player. Brewers drafted him in 05. He was actually the player to be named later, but that's no knock on Bradley. That all had to do with the success of CC Sabathia. And as we all know, in 2008, Sabathia's success in Milwaukee was significant. And so that upped the ante on the player that the Brewers had to return to the Indians. And Brantley was the guy that was on the list. Lind will take it on a nice big hop. 
Bradley is out and a good start for Matt Garza in his return to the mound. Now the Brewers coming to bat. Brewers coming up. Interleague Baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin tonight. Delighted to have you with us. A few selfies in there. Plenty of time for that. The Brewers batting order turned in by Craig Council. Looks like this. Gerardo Parra is back in and back leading off. Then Luke Croy followed by Braun. And then it's Adam Lynn, Carlos Gomez, and Aramis Ramirez in the middle of the order with Segura, Jeanette, and Garza rounding out the starting nine against Danny Salazar who's coming off a gem his last time out unfortunately for the Indians that was 10 days ago yeah 10 days rest and uh, this is a hard throw that strikes out a lot of batters he's 25 years old third season with the Cleveland Indians out of the Dominican Republic this kid's averaging over 10 strikeouts per nine innings he's got a great fastball he slots fourth in the Indians rotation the Brewers are going to see their fourth and fifth starter but uh, both are very good. Their starting rotation is outstanding. And look at Parra right away again. Jumping on the first pitch down in the corner. It goes. And Parra's thinking about third. Here he goes. The throw comes in late. A belly flop slide and a triple. Gerardo Parra starts it with a bang here tonight. Boy, how good has he been? My goodness. Well, how many times have we seen that lately? Gerardo Parra leading the game off with an extra base hit. This time a first pitch triple. Salazar with a big fastball and Parra able to turn it around right down that right field line and able to go all the way around to third base. This offense has been in high gear and the Brewers leadoff hitter a big part of it. That is his third triple of the season. Parra just continues on a very impressive run and he's huffing and puffing over there lead off triple sets up Jonathan Lucroy Lucroy with 19 runs batted in swinging about pretty well since he got back he's had his ups and downs remember he missed nearly 40 games with a broken toe on his left foot that was a foul ball he took in April against the uh, Cincinnati Reds. And since he's come back, there's been times when he's pressed a little bit, maybe trying to stack up the numbers in all the time that he missed. But look where he looks like his old self here recently, even homered in the last series against the Pirates. And Craig Council has got a pretty consistent lineup out there. The only thing he really moves around is Segura. And Parr against the left hand. You see Parr out of the lineup. Segura lead off. But it's been nice to see a consistent attack. The batting order stays pretty much the same. I mean, one of the reasons why I think this team's starting to score runs are getting comfortable in their spot in the batting order. And it is interesting that Craig Council's mantra for a batting order is anybody should be able to hit anywhere in the batting order. That's how I want to manage. That's how I want my players 
to think about it, but the success has come with the stability in the mm -hmm. in the batting order. So I'm not sure if he's uh, giving in a little bit or if he just likes where everybody's going. There's a ground ball. That's going to get a run home. And with the infield back, Luke Croy will take the RBI, and the Brewers score first. RBI ground out for Jonathan Luke Croy. The leadoff triple by Para set it up. And that's all it takes. You put it in play with a slider from Salazar. It's his third best pitch. He's got a fastball, upper 90s. And 96, 97. And then he'll throw a split change. He likes to use that split change a lot against lefties. And then he'll throw that slider once in a while. Also a curveball, but not very often. You're going to see a lot of fastballs from Danny Salazar. And Braun gets a fastball, fouls it out of play. Came in at 96. Braun a tick late. Ryan comes in batting 272 with 16 homers, 57 driven in. Six for 13 in his career against Cleveland. That includes a home run. That was in Cleveland. Brewers matched up against the Indians just a few years ago, but haven't played the Indians here at Miller Park since 2006. Which was the year before Ryan Braun made it to the big leagues. And a swing and a miss. Wow, Salazar making quick work of Braun on a 98 mile an hour fastball. Yeah, let's check out the Menards Cleveland defense. The Indians in the middle of the pack in the American League and team defense have committed 49 errors. Brantley Bourne and Moss in the outfield. Michael Bourne can run him down, the former Astro and Atlanta Braves. Urshela and Lindor, two young guys in the infield on the left side. Lindor, 21 years old. Urshela, 23. We have Kipnis Santana at second and first, and Jan Gomes behind the plate. Now there's the big ticket item in center field. It hasn't panned out so well at this point. Michael Bourne signed to a four year deal, nearly $50 million. It actually could turn into a five year contract. He has one year left on that deal. But it's been a struggle for him in Cleveland. And not hitting, not stealing bases. He's only got seven stolen bases this year. He certainly is familiar with Miller Park with his time as an Astro and, of course, a Philly. But he is, when he was an Astro, the Brewers and the Astros were in the same division. So he's played here a lot and had a lot to offer as far as advice for his outfield mates. About Adam that. Lynn takes a big <laughs> swing and a miss. Yeah. So, Salazar is bringing the heat early. Eighth in the American League in strikeouts with 117 now with the strikeout of Ryan Braun. This Cleveland starting rotation, the most strikeouts in the American League as a team. Lind is the only guy to have faced Salazar. And he's 0 for 4 with two strikeouts. No other brewer has seen him. Salazar. Made it to the big leagues in 2013. He had a reconstructive elbow surgery in the minor leagues in 2010. Missed most of 2011. Then once he got back, he was on the fast track to the big leagues. Lynn bounces out, and that will retire the side. But a good start for the Brewers. Para with a triple to start it. His third of the year, and then Lucroy drives him in with a ground out. One nothing, Brew Crew.
uttered his famous line just a bit outside, and I am just a bit high up here at Miller Park, uh, the very front row statue with Bob Uecker at the very last row here at Miller Park. So it's great to celebrate Major League Night, Bob Uecker's 60 years in baseball throughout the first pitch just before tonight's game. And uh, Craig Council had a great story about the filming of Major League here at County Stadium. He said he was in high school, 16, 17 years old, and remembers he and his friends from the summer leagues were actually trying out to be extras in the movie and said uh, he didn't get the part because they told him he looked like he was 12 and that he wouldn't pass as a big leaguer. So uh, he said he certainly remembers the filming of the movie, and it's a great baseball classic, one that you turn on and you watch every time that you see it on. <laughs> That's a great story, Sophia. <laughs> Thank you. He still looks like he's 12, but he's a big league manager. <laughs> I'm glad you said it. <laughs> right. Yeah, he's by far the youngest looking major league manager. He's not the youngest. But he looks the youngest and uh, so connected with uh, Milwaukee and of course uh, Major League night and uh, even though that team in Major League was the Cleveland Indians it was shot at County Stadium yeah. and you guys know the story and uh, a lot of fun Bob Uecker uh, always willing to play along great movie. Now what does you say the first one was great the second one was good the third one was on airplanes the second day. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos Santana the switch hitter leads away for the Indians and he draws the walk. Garza knows he's got to be on his game as far as command here tonight. Because the Indians are more than willing to take pitches and take walks. Yep, and Garza really hasn't had much of a problem with the base on balls this year. 33 walks coming in and 99 innings of work. Garza has been, you know, one of those cases for Garza this year. He seems like he cruises along and all of a sudden, maybe fourth or fifth inning, he'll give up a three or four spot. It's been that kind of season for him. A little inconsistent with his location on the fastball, but a good pitch right there to start Moss off with a curve. He'll get that curve over the slider is always a good pitch for him and got to locate the fastball and he will come inside here he comes right here and Moss got jammed that's a little flare in the shallow center that will fall a base hit. So Brandon Moss. Is aboard with the first hit for the Indians. And Cleveland has two on with nobody out. That was a good pitch by Matt Garza, but Moss able to fight it off. Might have uh, left it out over the plate just a little bit, but you know, Moss didn't hit it all that well and dumped it in front of Gomez in center. Now the Indians have been getting a lot of runners on base. Fourth in the league and on base percentage in the American League. Driving them in has been another story, so Garza is hoping to keep that fact true as Jan Gomes swings at the first pitch pulls it foul. Gomes the everyday catcher now for the Indians. We haven't seen Cleveland in a while. They moved Santana away from the plate after that gruesome knee injury and bounced him over to third for a little bit and now he ends up as their regular first baseman. But Gomes is the catcher. He reminds you a lot of Jonathan Lucroy, doesn't he? I mean, his stature. Center field, back is Gomez. And both runners are going to tag here. Gomez makes the catch to throw to second base. And only one will advance. So the first out, Santana to third base. And Garza has him at the corners with one away. Here is Michael Bourne now. Just a 229 hitter on base percentage, a touch over 300 this season. And not hitting for the kind of power that the Indians thought he would. He is by no means a power hitter, but the Indians were hoping. He'd give him 10 or so home runs. That's a ground ball. Maybe two. Jeanette to Segura. Fire to first. In time. And a double play. On a very speedy base runner. That is the first double play that Michael Bourne has grounded into this season. 
And it ends the inning. It goes 4 6 3. And a bullet from Segura. Inning over. Too. They look like they had a pretty good scoring chance in the top of the second, but our Columbia St. Mary's worth another look. 4 6 3 double play to get Garza out of the inning. That was well turned. Yeah, it's not the only way you're going to be able to turn one. I mean, Michael Bourne runs about as well as anybody, but able to get him out of that jam, that uh, hard hit ball to Scooter, and they're able to turn it. Carlos Gomez will lead off here in the second inning. Gomez, Ramirez, and Segura. First three up against hard throwing Danny Salazar. Well, there's a lot of life in that arm after 10 days off. He's hit 98 miles an hour already today. He came out of the gates throwing hard. Para tripled off of him on the first pitch that he saw. And then he scored on Lucroy's ground out in the first. It gives you an idea how good this starting rotation is and you know how many guys they can punch out three guys in the top 10 in strikeouts in the American League and this is game number four after the break and here he is. Corey Kluber the. Cy Young Award winner last year Brewers going to miss him There's another list of guys that the Brewers are going to miss yeah. they have missed a lot of good ones Gomez draws the walk lead off walk here in the second inning for the Brew crew. And but Kluber second in the American League in strikeout, second only to Chris Sale of the White Sox. Indian starting rotation. The Brewers are going to get the the back end of it. Salazar, Cody Anderson tomorrow. Kluber fronts this rotation, and then Carlos Carrasco almost threw a no hitter against the Tampa Bay Rays earlier this year. And Trevor Bauer is in the rotation as well. Ramirez on the first pitch a high fly ball just got under it and Brantley will bring it in for out number one oh, I just missed it boy 95 down the middle and he just got under it well you know you're going to get a fastball from this guy and there it is actually not down the middle middle in and you can see the reaction <laughs> Of Aramis Ramirez, not sure what he said. I don't know much Spanish, but <laughs> probably glad I don't at this point. Yeah, that might have required a seven-second delay. I'm guessing. Segura now with Gomez at first. Interesting contrast here. Segura turns that one around. Way back, goodbye. Home run, Gene Segura. First pitch swinging again. 
Segura makes it three to nothing with it just his fourth home run of the season. Two run blast. Well, the plan is pretty obvious. If you get a fastball early in the count that you like, go to Hacken. Yeah, Ramirez just missed his, but Segura didn't miss this fastball. Same pitch, pretty much. I mean, he will try to elevate the heater, and that one way back down the left center. Powerball home run number four for Segura, and his first home run since June 5th. So going on seven weeks between homers, Segura, that was a no doubter. That snaps an interesting streak for Segura. His last 38 hits were singles <laughs> until that booming home run. Didn't look like a singles hitter right there, did it? No. He got one to turn on. That was up and in. And when you know the fastball is coming, I mean, you're going to be able to do that. That's the thing. About Salazar. I mean, he does strike out a number of batters. Got to come up with that off speed pitch. There's one right there, slider. I was just about to say before uh, Segura swung at that first pitch. What a contrast in styles here. The Indians, a team that uh, preaches patience, they try to see as many pitches per plate appearance as they can. It's over four. And the Brewers are just the opposite. They swing early. They are a very aggressive team. And when they're hitting like they are right now, and it's a pretty significant stretch of games now that the Brewers have been swinging the bats well, they are tough to get out. And they can quick strike you with the best of them in the big leagues. Jeanette just lays the bat on it and a fly ball to left for out number two. And when they do that and they're not swinging the bats well, and, you know, everybody wonders why don't they be more patient at the plate? <laughs> but you know when they are swinging the bat well everybody says that's a good approach. Hey the Brewers collide with the Cubs next Thursday July 30th through Sunday August 2nd. As the NL Central rivals square off in a four game weekend series at Miller Park. Call 414-902-4000 or go to Brewers.com to reserve your spot today. Matt Garza. With two outs two runs are in he's been staked to a three nothing lead. Brewers are getting ready for a great home schedule in the month of August. Take advantage of it before the kids go back to school. Garza, a little ground ball to first, played by Santana, and that will retire the side. The Brewers have brought out the whooping sticks early. Got a triple from Parra. How about a two run home run from Segura? 3 0 Milwaukee as we head to the third.
Head to the third inning, and we are pleased to be joined now by the scouting director of the professional side, Zach Manazian. He's the most important guy in the organization right now as we approach <laughs> the trade deadline. So I guess we should start this entire process by talking about all the things you can't talk about. <laughs> exactly. Right? You're that's, pretty limited in your. It's uh, pretty much how it is this time <laughs> of year, but that's all right. You don't want to play your cards too exactly. soon. Exactly. All right, well, we'll answer this. Are, uh, how many phone calls, emails? I mean, what's the business of Zach Manazian like right now as we approach July 31st? Uh, it's, it's pretty much nonstop. Usually uh, this is the first time I've lost my voice somewhat, and I don't know how long. So. <laughs> It's a lot of talking to our scouts, uh, other teams, pro directors, and then a lot of just relaying information to Doug. And Doug relaying information back to us, and we try and filter through it, and which is important and which isn't, and uh, work from there. But tell us again, just uh, for everybody so they can know your exact job. So there are two branches of the scouting department, the amateur side and then your side, which is the professional side, which means what? So the amateur side oversees high school players, college players, junior college players. On the professional side, we oversee major league players, minor league players, and the independent leagues. So any player in affiliated baseball, I should know. Our scouts, our pro scouts should know, and we have to be able to give Doug, Gord, the rest of the front office, scouting reports and so on and so forth, information on any of those players. Zach is the one who uh, dispatches all of the Brewers' Pro scouts and uh, sending them all over the country. And how do you keep that organized with where to send particular scouts to see particular players? I would imagine this is the year where they're in the minor leagues, right? Mm -hmm. They're seeing a lot of minor league players. Absolutely. It's a very difficult process. I'm fortunate to have great help. Ben McDonough helps me in the office. And we have other people in the office. Uh, Tom Flanagan, Barb Stark do a lot of work with our pro staff and helping out and keeping things organized. The administrative part is so important. A lot of it with which teams to see is somewhat of a guessing game, and Doug and I sit often and try and figure out which teams may fit us better than others. And we need to make sure that not only we see their, their teams, their affiliated, their minor league clubs, but that we see them more than once. So we have multiple opinions, and we can rely on our scouts um, to give the scouting side, the scouting viewpoint, mm -hmm. to make the best decision possible. Now, you've been in this position with the Brewers now. This is your fifth year, right? Yes. I mean, how different is this year at this point in the year than in the past four that you've been in this spot? It's very different. Uh, my, my perspective is I always try and prepare for the worst. Um, the old John Wooden line about preparing, if, uh, not preparing for failure and failing to prepare. So um, prepare for the worst. And I always think it's easier to go the other way when the mm -hmm. team's playing well and we're talking about major league players. So we always want to cover our bases with prospects and knowing which team's best prospects or who and, and what our fits may be, what their fits may be. Um, so it's different, somewhat similar similar to when we were trading Zach Grinke. So we've been through this process before, but we started much earlier given our start. Zach Manazian joining us here in the booth. Urshela, the rookie to center field for out number one. Here's a great question. So, you know, a guy like Giovanni Urshela and a guy like Francisco Lindor, you know, these are new names, new faces for us as they come to the big leagues but these are guys that you've known you've seen probably have some familiarity with absolutely I can sit back and close my eyes to think about watching Francisco Lindor when he was in high school in our draft room um, Giovanni Ursula you talk as these players come up so it's definitely not a, a process that starts I would say two weeks before the deadline it starts years and years yeah. before constantly just building up more information and I like to call it a database of players and what they can and can't do Let's make a hypothetical here. Now, let's just say you know, a team has an interest in Carlos Gomez. Now, you go back, you know, to it, that team who has that interest. Uh, are you looking for a particular, you know, area, you know, pitching, you know, outfield, infield, you know, left-handed hitter, or is it just, you know, their best prospects in general? I always uh, I heard a line once about need is the worst evaluator. So my my experience, I just want to get the most talented player. That was well put, Zach. No, we were kind of expecting the Marshawn Lynch uh, from you today. I'm just here so I don't get fined, but you've been pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, we've lobbed you a few softballs. Now, yeah. what we have here is we have two uh, things for you to use. Now, this is the Matt Garza, and this is the Bob Euchre. How many players will we be trading? More than five, you can go with Garza. Less than five, you can put the Bob Euchre out. No, just kidding. We wouldn't do that to him. His bosses, is, his bosses are watching. Right, right right now but you guys do have a very important job right now and uh, 
you know my brother is a pro scout and when your team's winning and you're trying to get get pieces to get into a playoff run you're usually in big league stadiums uh, trying to find talent that you can add to your roster and then when you're not and when you're trying to maybe trade and you're a seller then you're usually in the minor leagues and that can get very difficult on your scouts and the travel and how do you keep morale up with your team absolutely you try and keep in contact with them as much as you can um, we had one scout I was just talking to the other day and, and he's been home one night in the last I think it was 48 days so I think I'm gonna get some hate mail from his fiance pretty <laughs> soon here um, but but it, it is tough to do and the thing that I like telling the scouts is that the other departments are depending on us to do our job Jason Kipnis lines one fair down the left field line and he's on his way to second base with a double two out double by one of the best hitters in the game Jason Kipnis so there really hasn't been a whole lot of activity in all of baseball I mean there's 10 days left before the trading deadline do you anticipate a ratcheting up of uh, activity and maybe some trades going on is everybody waiting for the first hammer to fall the first trade to happen before Everybody else gets going. I anticipate action. I try to always anticipate it. I think as far as waiting for chips to fall, you have different levels of players. So, um, say a number one starter may not ex may not have any effect on say a number four or five, um, but those guys in those groups, those certain groups, may affect other players. So, I think uh, in some aspects it does, but maybe not a huge. Um, Maybe not a huge emphasis on one player getting traded versus another. Mm -hmm. All right, give us a quick scout story now in case uh, this inning ends right here. You know, maybe one from the past, one that you know about that, that would be interesting. Maybe fans didn't know all the back channeling that was going on with it doesn't have to be our organization either could you spend some time in the Rangers organization as well I yeah. hope you told him oh. you were going to ask that question I did not came on. but well, I know he can handle it there, there's <laughs> there's so many possibilities that happen in trades and I love going through the history of them and I remember being in Texas and at that point I was just a bat boy a little kid working in the clubhouse and <laughs> we had uh, Rangers that traded Alex Rodriguez and gotten Alfonso Soriano and they had a, a list of four players uh, to be named later and um, they took Joaquin Arias, who was a shortstop. The Rangers didn't really have many shortstops in the system at the time, and they took a need player, and they passed on Robinson Cano. Oh, Ooh. good one, Zach. That is good. And right on cue, the inning ends. You're off the hot seat, my All friend. All right. Thanks, we'll guys. We'll be uh, talking about you quite a bit here in the next Great. couple of weeks. Thanks, Zach. Zach Manassian's been with us. Third inning and Gerardo Parra will lead off for Milwaukee. Carsoup.com trivia tonight. It is Major League night here at the ballpark with the Indians here. And uh, honoring Bob Euchre in his 60th anniversary in baseball. So which former Brewers appeared in the movie Major League? Yes, that is plural. There were two of them. One you're going to know, I'm sure. One you might not. 
All right, good question here tonight. One of the guys that caught that in the minor leagues. Salazar back to work. First pitch to Para, who swings and fouls it away. I think that uh, that question deserves uh, you know, a bit of a hint. Go ahead. No, no, I, I just gave it. Oh, that was a hint. That I caught him hint. in the minor leagues. That's yeah, in no other hint. Words, in other words, he was in a big time major leaguer. Your hint requires a hint. He's a uh, Wisconsinite. Well, that helps a little bit. West Bend. Not. Now you're now you're dialing in. Now that good, got Mike good, Faulkner's attention. Good, good buddy of Mike Faulkner, <laughs> stats man. So Google all that, and you might get to get, get the answer. Ball and a strike on Para, who tripled on the first pitch he saw in the first inning, and rock his batting average on first pitch swings or first pitch balls in play. Probably better stated. Is 500. Yeah. He is 28 for 56. You know what that means? That means when he does attack that first pitch, it's a good pitch to hit. He's not chasing anything. And a swing and a miss. Salazar strikes him out. It's that split change that he throws. That was a good one. Uses it with two strikes. Able to get Para. And watch it go down. It's more like a, his changeup. He spreads the fingers apart like a splitter, and that's a good two-strike pitch. Oh, thanks to Zach Manazian, director of pro scouting. There's not a whole lot he can offer right now, other than the, the more philosophical. I thought it was good info, though. Good information. How about his little story there with uh, Robinson Cano? Right. I remember, he was talking about. Trying not to scout for need. And then uh, in that particular trade passed on Robinson Cano because they had a need at a certain position. Right. Wow. Yeah. And plus uh, Zach had a 7-0 uh, road trip when uh, you know he was on the trip. You know he was the Brewers front office representative on the uh, the Philly road trip. Mm -hmm. Philly and Cincinnati right. Yeah. Went. Uh, he ran the table. Well I think you should travel. For the rest of the road trips from here on out. Oh two to Lucroy and a bouncing ball to second. And there is out number two. We got one of uh, Zach's scouts that he sends out all over the country. Brad Del Barba. He's in the ballpark tonight. Has the Cleveland Indians as part of his coverage. And good to see Brad. Yeah. Those guys do go all over the place. They might not know. They might be expecting one night, you know, to be in one city, go to the next, or get a call. No, you got to go here. Mm -hmm. So that's that's tough. For, that's a tough uh, tough business. And it is Zach Manazian who is kind of the air traffic control on who goes where and who sees who. Ouch! Inside that hit him. It's tough to hit Braun. He stands so far off the plate. But that one comes in and drills him and Braun is aboard two outs a base runner. They caught him right on the hand. Yeah. Well, they do work him inside and you see how far inside that was. I mean that wasn't even close. Third time this year Braun's been hit by a pitch. It gives the Brewers a base runner with Adam Lind coming up. Indians one of the few teams that do not shift against Adam Lind. Close play ball skips away. Terry Francona generally speaking plays things pretty straight defensively. He's a little bit old school in that department. If the numbers are overwhelming he'll move his infielders. Most teams put three infielders on the right side against Adam Lynn. Yeah, about as much of a shift as you'll see with the Indians right there. You got the shortstop playing way up the middle. Ursula off the line at third. Teams are especially hesitant to do that with a runner at first, especially a guy like Braun, who's a threat to steal. Braun's only been caught once this year. Let's see if he tries to run. Not here. And a little cue shot foul. 
Cleveland still expecting Lynn to pull the ball on the ground. They have all of their infielders over a touch, but not the dramatic shift. That's kind of surprising, too, when you have, you know, saying, yeah, I got the Salazar throwing in the upper 90s. I would not classify Adam Lynn as a pull hitter. Not by any stretch. And Lynn, they cut it a miss to end the inning. So a strikeout to end it, a strikeout to start it. Salazar has three on the game. Nothing Brewers they lead in the top of the fourth inning. Say Fox Sports Wisconsin is giving away great prizes during every Brewers broadcast in July. Prizes include Brewers merchandise, Miller Park tours, autograph merchandise, and more. Here is tonight's Watch 'em and Win 'em sweepstakes image. Just log on to FoxSportsWisconsin.com, click on the Watch 'em and Win 'em banner on the homepage to enter. And if you're not a winner tonight, tune in again for our next broadcast Thursday in Arizona for another chance to win. Coming to the end of July, and that's why we're talking scouting and potential trades. Trade deadline, the non waiver period is July 31st. Michael Brandley was a July trade from the Brewers to the Indians in 2008, right before the All Star break. And he rolls, it hits the bag. Bounces up over Adam Lind, and that'll be a single for Michael Brantley. He has a unique ability to put the bat on the baseball and put it in play. And it looked off the bat, it was going to be an easy out, hit the bag right over the head of Lind. What are you going to do about that, right? He is the hardest to strike out in the American League. Strikes out once every almost 14 at bats. That's pretty good. Yep, where is it? Over his head and in the right field. That's when you know you're going good as a hitter, right? When you hit the back. And what looked like a routine out. Lead off base runner against Garza. It is the third Cleveland hit. Carlos Santana now, who walked his last time up. Very patient hitter. Takes one down and in. Cleveland is coming off a series against Cincinnati. They took two out of three. And on Sunday, their 11 inning victory against the Reds, they saw 237 pitches as an offense. And that includes the pitcher batting. Santana pops this one out of play. So on average, that is 4.23 pitches per plate appearance. And it's significant because it's the second most of the majors. Behind the, the Mets, hmm. who saw over 300 pitches in a 17-inning game against St. Louis, right? Amazing, huh? On that day, 
It took 17 innings, so it gives you an idea of the Indians' philosophy, what they want to do, try to do at the plate. And this guy at the plate, he does not swing at too many bad pitches. Second in the American League in walks. 61 walks with his walk in the second inning. A curveball in there for a strike for Garza. Garza has induced one double play here today. It got him out of an inning in the second after two were on with nobody out. And a swing and a miss. He struck him out. Garza goes with a fastball. 94. Pretty good velocity for Garza. Man, Lucroy setting up inside. He put it inside, but it was down. Usually left handers like it down there, but the big swing from Santana comes up empty. Second strikeout for Matt Garza. Punched out the pitcher Salazar last inning. And here's Brandon Moss. Moss was an all star last year with the Athletics. Had a terrific season in Oakland. Team that ended up in the postseason as the wild card. The second wild card team they lost. Remember they lost to the Royals had that big lead with John Lester on the mound. So Moss signing with the Indians. They'll have a decade in the big leagues next year. He's hit for some power with 15 homers. But a low batting average and a low on base percentage. And he does strike out a lot. 95 strikeouts. Hit hard to right. Base hit. One out single for Moss. Two tried, on with one out. Try to come inside again. Garza been leaving that pitch out over the plate. Second time he tried to come in on Moss. Second time that Moss was able to fight one off. He dumped one in front of Gomez his first time up. You can see that one leak over the heart of the plate and he rips it hard into right field. So for the second inning in this game, second in the last three innings, the Indians have two on. There is one out. Here is Jan Gomes. Gomes, the Indians catcher. Bounced into four double plays this season. Another guy who doesn't walk much, typically puts the ball in play. Hitting just 220 and an on base percentage of 240. One and one and to Gomes. His curveball on a 1 0 pitch. Well, you can throw that pitch when you're down in the count. Good things are going to happen for you. Second time the guards has thrown that curveball for a strike. Indians with two on. Garza returning to the mound. First time since. July 2nd 19 days between starts and went on the disabled list knowing he could utilize the all star break shoulder fatigue for Matt Garza last time out against the Phillies he struggled gave up 10 hits in six innings in the right hit hard but right at Braun who has to leap for it. Bradley will tag and go to third. Garza fortunate there. Gomes lines out two away. Runners at the corners for Michael Bourne. Yeah, that one almost full Braun out there in right field. Had some backspin on it, and Gomes hit that one right on the screws. Now runners in scoring position, runners on base has been. 
the Achilles heel for Cleveland as far as their batting average in those particular occurrences. As Rock mentioned, they are top five in the American League and on base percentage. So they're a club that is putting a lot of traffic on base. Born takes a strike. Hitting 228 as a team with runners in scoring position. 0 for 4 tonight. They're hitting only 171 with runners in scoring position and two outs. Wow. The situation right here with Bourne at the plate and a runner at third. Missed with it. Two balls and a strike. In there, same spot. So both of his strikes on that outside corner. Two and two the count. And maybe try to go out there again. I mean, the, the hits that he's given up have been mainly fastballs in. Not able to get it in there enough. Two two runners at first and third and a call strike three. Garza rings the bell with a breaking ball. Ford is out. Two left on for the tribe. Johnson is brought to you by Marshfield Clinic. Don't just live, shine. By Piggly Wiggly, the official supermarket of Fox Sports Wisconsin. And by Hupe and Abraham, 800-800-5678. Hupe and Abraham, tell them you mean business. Tuesday night, Miller Park. Day game tomorrow. Matinee here between the Brewers and the Indians. And then Milwaukee is... Off to Phoenix, Arizona, four game series with the Diamondbacks, and then the Giants, a three game series in San Francisco against the reigning world champs. Diamondbacks are playing good baseball. The Giants are certainly in the picture as well. Giants right now behind the Dodgers in the National League West. Arizona had caught the Giants to move into a tie for second, but they've dropped. Seven of their last ten. Right now they're five under. 
Gomez it's sawed off fouls that one back one and two the count. Yeah this is about the time of year where the Giants start kicking it into high gear right. Of course this is an odd number year so eh, maybe not. Yeah next year is their year right if you're a bet man. Three titles in the last five years. 2010 2012 2014. And missed the playoffs the other two. Yeah, well, take a year off. It's the least they could do. Well, the playoff picture starting to uh, round into form, and uh, it's interesting to look at the teams that are either surging or dropping. Right now in the National League, the Nationals, the Cardinals, the Dodgers are the division leaders. Even though the Brewers just swept the Pirates, you got to put the Pirates in that elite company right now. They, in the National League, they just uh, seem to have all the pieces to uh, not just contend, but contend for a World Series, not just make the playoffs, yeah. but maybe win a division. But we'll see. Cardinals uh, really battling a lot of injuries right now. Yeah, they are. Cubs are hanging in there in the Central. The Cubs are in Cincinnati tonight. That game is tied at two in the sixth inning. There's ball four, and Carlos Gomez has walked twice in this game. He's not an easy guy to walk, but he's been very patient here tonight. Seems like his walks come in bunches. I mean, he had a four walk game earlier this year. Two tonight. And he is aboard for Ramos Ramirez. Now Ramos swung at the first pitch his last time up, hit a towering fly ball out to left field. Powerball home run leaderboard. Ramirez is on there. 11. Braun leads the club. And Adam Lynn, one behind him. Braun is the only inside the top leaderboard in the National League home run race in the top 10. He's tied for eighth with those 16 home runs. Ramirez has been hot in the month of July. Came in with a 347 average this month. His bat has come alive. Almost on cue. He does it pretty much every year. <laughs> Second half player. You wonder why the Brewers have not tried to steal Gomes behind home plate. 43% throwout ratio. I mean, that's about as good as it gets. Guy can throw the baseball. Carlos really hasn't either time on first base looked like he wants to run. Gomez with just seven steals this year, seven out of 12. And caught five times, which is rare for him as Ramirez swings and misses. A strikeout for Salazar. He's been able to rack up four K's now, and all of them on that breaking, or three of the four on that breaking ball. Gene Segura, first ball swinging, last time up. Two run home run. It was a bomb out of here. Off the back wall of the bullpen, which is some. 30 feet behind the wall. He's been swinging it, hadn't he? Yes, he has. Most of that singles. The 20, 21 of the 22 hits have been singles until that home run in the month. Matter of fact, he had 38 straight singles until his home run. A 
A two run home run for Segura gave the Brewers their current lead at three nothing. Be curious to talk to Segura after the game when he hit that home run as he was running to first base. He looked in the dugout and the Brewers dugout it looked like a specific look. You don't know. I don't know if it was just you know something for one of his teammates, his buddies, or if he was checking in with Darnell Cole. Something that was said maybe before the at bat. He doesn't normally do that. Well, it might have been Darnell Cole's. I mean, these guys never seen him before in the scanner report on Salazar. He's turning around while he's pointing to his hitting coach. Maybe John Shelby. Jump on him early. He's going to throw a lot of fastballs. I like that. That feels like a scouting report reaction. Like he got the good one. Yeah. Good stuff. He does a good job, Darnell. He knows what the hitters are going to see. Whether they listen or not, that's up to them. <laughs> Segura's all star year of 2013 he hit 12 home runs for the Brewers. Hasn't approached that number since hit five last year has four this year. Two and two. Danny Salazar, hard throwing 25 year old right hander. Taking a peek at Gomez. Daring <laughs> Salazar to throw over there. Gomez was refusing to go to the bag unless the throw was coming his way. <laughs> Good size lead over there at first. There he goes and Segura in the air. Long run out there and did he catch it in foul territory he did. An out Moss heck of a play up against the retaining wall and yeah, not much room down there being foul territory but able to get there and. Not do any damage to himself. Well he was in a full out sprint to get that baseball and able to haul it in and. Right there it reaches out and it's a snow cone but Gomez is able to get back. He took off on the pitch. He looked in. He saw the ball up in the air and was able to get back to first. Salazar applauding that effort. Good catch. Moss has experience in this ballpark as well in his time with the Pirates. There's not a lot of room over there to maneuver once you get close to the wall. Tucked in tight. And blocked from our view. Scooter Jeanette with two away and a runner at first still. A little half swing roller right to Salazar. That will retire the side. Scoreless inning for Salazar. The Brewers have three on the board tonight. They lead three nothing through four.
Milwaukee Brewers Community Involvement Initiative, known as the Community Achievers Award, recognizes residents throughout the state of Wisconsin each month during the season for displaying extraordinary efforts in their community. All adults and school-aged children throughout the state of Wisconsin are eligible to participate in the Community Achievers Program. And Matt Garza back to work in his first start coming off the disabled list since July 2nd. And Garza told me he feels really good physically, didn't want to have to miss any time, did miss just one start with the All-Star break, but says it feels better not to have to pitch through any pain like he was towards the end of that first half of the season. And he said, you know, we were afraid when Willie Peralta went down that things were going to get a little shaky in the rotation, but he said he's proud of how the young guys have stepped up. And he said, Loesch and I now need to do the same. He says, we feel like we're right there. We need to hang in there and uh, do our best in the second half. As Garza gives up a base hit to start this inning, Giovanni Urshela, the rookie, starting the inning. I know those guys, Rock, feel a great sense of responsibility, first yeah. of all, as Sophia mentioned, but there's also that carryover effect. You see young guys come up without the experience, without the scouting reports, and then have the kind of success that they've had. It's got to be inspiring even for these yeah. guys who have been around for a while. Yeah, inject a little bit of energy into that starting rotation. Those guys hang out a lot. You see them in the clubhouse together on the bench. They have their own special spot in that dugout. And uh, you know, just the fact that these young kids are, are doing such a good job for this starting rotation. You never know. I might it might get these guys going. You know Kyle Loesch tomorrow. It seems like Garza has pretty good zip on his fastball tonight. Has a good curveball. We've seen a good curveball. A couple of them. Well, fielding uh, a feeling a little tightness in the shoulder so wisely shut it down. I mean you know, Salazar can't get the bunt down. I mean the worst thing you can do if you're Garza is to try to pitch through that and then have a serious injury. He knows his value to this team is important. He signed the richest contract by a, by a pitcher in Brewers franchise history. Four year deal. And uh, he's in year two. Of that deal so important that. You listen to your body and shut it down and. He's got a lot of zip on his fastball here tonight. I think the big question right was command and he's been all right in that category. Yeah, really trying to establish inside but you know the mistakes that he's made. Have come on trying to come on the inside corner leaving it out over the plate. So when he was going well there was a stretch where he was pitching pretty good baseball. He was very good. At jamming hitters on that inside corner. He's got to be able to do that to open up the outside corner with the curveball and the slider. That miss bunt attempt by Salazar gives Garza his fourth strikeout. And to the top of the order with a runner at first for Jason Kipnis. Kipnis with a double his last time up hit a bullet down the left field line. Good to all fields. No moving at all in that swing. I mean that pre setup. The stands right there kind of rocks back a little bit. That's his triggering mechanism and you know the less movement that you have. With your legs and your hands the more consistent you're going to be. Trying to make contact with that baseball. I mean nothing hardly anything moves before he tries to swing the bat. Right off the end of the bat and that is going to stay fair. It stops right on the grass. If it rolls off the grass it's going to roll foul. Just the momentum of that lip and Lucroy. Took a shot unlikely he's going to be able to throw him out. Kipnis runs well that'll be an infield hit. And again the Indians have two men on base. Yeah when you're good you're good right. Now, sometimes it's good to be lucky too. Checked it up on the green with the wedge. Look at that, right off the end of the bat. A lot of times, you know, most of the time that ball's going to spin foul and just sticks into that grass here at Miller Park for a base hit. Only Prince Fielder has more multi hit games than Kipnis in the American League. That's number 34 for Kipnis. Prince has 39 for the Rangers. Second consecutive inning with two on. Third inning tonight, the Indians have had two on. But they've got the part of the order they want up with men on base. 
with Lindor, a hot hitter, albeit a rookie, and Michael Brantley do next. It's been almost a script, isn't it? I mean, six hits for the Indians. They've had men on base in just about every inning, but haven't been able to cross home plate yet. It's kind of the way it's gone. Missed inside now three and zero. Oh. This is the guy you got to come back against. You certainly don't want to deal with Brandley, their best hitter, their most productive hitter, with the bases loaded. Francisco Lindor takes a strike. He is the Indians' top prospect. Made his big league debut on June 14th. He's a top five prospect in all of baseball, as a matter of fact. A lot of uh, prospect rankings had him as high as fourth. Fourth best prospect. And Chris Bryant was uh, the overall number one for most parties. And uh, he made the all-star team this year. Two on, one out. Here's a three-one swing and a miss. On the ball four. Oh, well, we're anxious for Lindor, especially with the number three hitter on deck. Let's see if guards can take advantage of the fact that Lindor swung at a pitch out of the zone. Coming back from three and zero oh against the 21-year-old Lindor. Three-two pitch. Bouncing ball. Segura is over. He's got it. Step on the back. Throw to first. Another double play. Matt Garza has gotten two tonight. Segura took that one by himself. Cuts down another speedy runner. Inning over. Play to end the inning for Matt Garza, and it is time once again for you to tweet us your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag WISDataStrongFan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. It's brought to you by T Mobile. Beautiful night in Milwaukee. Final night of the homestand. Got a day game tomorrow, a matinee in this brief two gamer with the Indians, and then off to Phoenix. Matt Garza leads off. He takes strike one from Salazar. Garza bounced to first his first time up. Brewers got a run in the first, a leadoff triple by Para, and then Lucroy drove him in with a ground out. And then Segura hit a two run homer in the second inning. Garza had, or rather Gomez had started the inning with a walk. And Segura 
jumping on the first pitch. Hit one out to deep left center. Just his fourth homer of the year. And Garza is a strikeout victim. That is number five for tough, Salazar. Tough matchup for a pitcher when you're throwing that hard. It's just such an easy delivery for Salazar and just effortless and it just explodes out of his hand anywhere between 92 of the fastball the two seamer. And he's got it up there as high as I think 98. There it is. Now that came in the first inning as well. He was. Out of the gates throwing hard quickly. At the play presented by Wendy's. See the night of Gerardo Parra. First pitch. Swing in the first inning. Produced a triple. So this is the year of Gerardo Parra and just so so about what he normally does his first 50 games but. He's doing something he's never done in the big leagues playing every day and hitting for a very high average. Comes in ninth in the league. In batting right behind Buster Posey in batting average. Here's Lindor the shortstop and that is out number two. I remember Salazar when he came up. With the uh, Indians in 2013 he really. Lit it up in 13. Remember, he had come off uh, reconstructive elbow surgery in the minor leagues and uh, missed all of 11 or most of 11 and came back. And he was in the big leagues two years after that and had a good year, just 10 games. But then he got the start in the wild card game against the Tampa Bay Rays. And I called that game. For Turner, and I remember he came out in that first inning, same deal. He was throwing 98 miles an hour. And we're thinking at the time, like, wow, this could be special. <laughs> Either that or it's not going to last long. <laughs> he lasted four innings. Yeah. Alex Cobb was fantastic that day for the Tampa Bay Rays. That was a great run for the Rays. Remember, they had gone to Texas the night before and won in a tiebreaker scenario, and then they went to Cleveland. So Tampa Bay had to win the final game of the regular season then go to Texas in the tiebreaker. And matter of fact they had to win the weekend. Of the regular season right they literally. Were facing elimination. Before the season even ended and, and yet they kept winning and kept winning and. Eventually they faced the Boston Red Sox and were eliminated in that series. But uh, Cleveland just ran into a hot club. At the time, even though the Indians had the top wild card spot, that was Francona's first year with Cleveland. And he chose Salazar as his guy, even though there were there were days rest. There were, you know, that was a Tuesday, if I recall. Season ended on a Sunday. And he felt like Salazar could handle that postseason pressure. He did for a couple of innings. Man, he seems like he has a pretty good off speed pitch tonight as well. I mean, the split change, the slider, he's starting to throw that pitch a little bit more. I mean, you just can't, as a starter, just continue inning after inning throwing you know, 95 to 98. You just can't do that. And that's been an issue for him lately. He mentioned his last start, eight and two thirds and a win. Now, in three of his last five, including that last one, didn't go past five innings. He's kind of an all or nothing guy right now. His good days are great. As is evidenced by his last start, as you mentioned. I mean, that was an out away from a complete game. Struck out eight in that game. His strikeout to walk ratio is very good throughout the season. Yeah, four and a half to one. That's pretty good. So, all the signs of a potential ace. I think you could put him in the Jimmy Nelson category, right? He throws harder than Jimmy. But. When you see him on his good days, it, it is eye opening and jaw dropping, and you think, okay, we're looking at an ace, a potential all star. Yep, if he's able to start getting those secondary pitches over, like Jimmy Nelson is starting to do. Salazar shakes a couple of times, and Lucroy steps out. Two and two with two outs. Luke 
Ackroyd doing all he can to hang in there. Salazar sticking with the breaking ball against Lucroy. Yeah, second time through, a lot more off speed stuff. This will be the ninth pitch he's throwing to Lucroy in this at bat. 75th pitch overall. And we're in the fifth inning. Cleveland does have activity in their bullpen. Long battle, Luke Croy and Salazar. And again, Salazar is shaking off Jan Gomes a few times. He knows what he wants. Here comes a 2 2. Fastball, Luke Croy, right field line foul. A little late. And a souvenir. And that's what the off speed pitch does for you. Keep throwing it, you put it in the hitter's head, and not able to barrel up the fastball. Tenth pitch of the at bat. And a swing and a miss. That looked like a a breaking ball that time. And Lucroy is out. Inning is over. A couple of K's for Salazar. And that's where we sit. Three nothing as we go to the sixth. We invite you to join the Bucks for Own the Future Open House. That's going to be on Friday, July 24th, this coming Friday. And your name, add your name to the roster. You have new members of the Bucks organization. Check out the best seats available for the next season. You can lock in the best prices. Own the future with the Bucks. FoxSportsWisconsin.com slash events for more details. Five in the books. Interleague baseball tonight at Miller Park. Matt Garza working on a shutout through five. He's had a lot of base runners behind him. But two double plays. And have wiped out a couple of innings. That was a huge double play mm -hmm. in the fifth. Because Brantley was coming up with men on base otherwise. And remember Garza was in a 3-0 count to Lindor. And Lindor swung at a pitch out of the strike zone on the 3 1 pitch, allowing him to you know, get the double play ball, not having to deal with Brantley with the bases loaded. So instead, Brantley leads off. I think the most impressive statistic when you look down at Brantley's year so far this year, he's only struck out 26 times this year. Mm -hmm. 26 punch outs and 363 plate appearances. 41 walks, 26 punch outs. And when you have as many walks as strikeouts, that's considered to be extremely good. I mean, he's almost double the walks to strikeouts. It's 
Only Nori Aoki, the former Brewer, is uh, tougher to fan in the big leagues. Aoki strikes out about one every 17 at bats, and then uh, there's Bradley, about 14 at bats per K. Numbers on a steady rise until this year. He's had some back problems, slowed him a little bit. Was an all star last season. Huge year last year, and Indians are hopeful he's going to continue as a 20 to 25 home run per year player. High on base percentage, 372, even though his batting average is just a touch under 300. To center field, hit well, but Gomez playing deep is there for out number one. Line drive out by Brantley. He's one out of three tonight, one away in the six. Hey, get your hands on the Brewers' first ever Garden Gnome giveaway Sunday, August 2nd, as the Brewers and the Cubs meet in an afternoon matchup at Miller Park. All fans in attendance get a Count Garza Gnome courtesy of Associated Bank. Reserve your spot today at Brewers.com. The Garza Gnome. <laughs> Yeah, you want to have some alliteration there, but it just doesn't work. It, unless his name was Narza, and then right. it'd be the Narza Gnome. Nar Narza Gnome, yeah. I kind of like it. You know, it's got a little bit of the, the count going, the wizard. And... Garza had his bowling tournament last night, didn't he? Yes, he did. I saw him bowling left-handed, which was a good move. <laughs> a very good move, coming off the disabled list. Yeah, that uh, raised a lot of money, and Craig had a nice... Piece on that on our pregame show today. Good for Matt Garza getting out there yeah. contributing on and off day, no less. Day before he pitches. Pitchers are funny about that, you know. Got their uh, day before routine. Well, if he wins here today, maybe bowling will be in his left handed bowling will be as part of his day before routine. Curious to see how long Council is going to stick with Garza. Pitch count in good shape here in the sixth inning. I mean, no real uh, definite pitch count limitations on Garza. Going to keep an eye on him, see how he's doing. The hitters always tell you how a pitcher's doing. Point of contact. Get a little bit antsy to get on that phone right now. Second time he's walked Santana. And as you would expect, his. Command is not impeccable by any stretch. He's given up a couple of walks and the command in the strike zone. He's given up the six hits. He's been some hard hit balls too. But overall, a success for Garza coming back. Now can he finish it off here? They'd love to see him get through six at least. But he has had a lot of base runners behind him. Cleveland has had eight base runners in this game, but two double plays have ended innings for Garza. For whatever reason, Brandon Moss has a good success against Garza. He's now seven for 12 in his career. Seven hits, 12 at bats. Yeah. Two for two tonight. Garza misses two and one. Out to the mound goes Lucroy. Bullpen stirring, nobody throwing, but pitchers getting loose. Lucroy staring back into the dugout. 
There's some activity down in that Brewers bullpen. Guys starting to move around a little bit. Three balls and a strike. So Moss in the driver's seat here. Two hits already. Yeah, their home run leader, 15 home runs. Moss hit 25 last year in an all star season in Oakland. Ground ball, chance to turn it here. That's Ramirez coming across the bag. <laughs> and it is a very unusual 6 5 3 double play. How about that? He's shortstop now. With the shift on, Segura on the right side of the infield, and Ramirez, where's that base? Oh, yeah. There it is, no problem. Another <laughs> inning ending double play. As we go to the bottom of the six, our Carsu.com trivia, which former Brewers appeared in the movie Major League. It is Major League night here at Miller Park with the Indians here. Everybody knows Pete Vukovic, right? But uh, Willie Mueller is uh, the water cooler answer. That'll win you a beer somewhere, maybe. There's a pitcher in the uh, Brewers uh, organization. I caught him when we were in AAA together in Vancouver. And still living in Wisconsin mm -hmm. in West Bend. Yeah. I have his phone number if you want me to post it. Yeah. If you could get an address and a social security number, that'd be great. Oh, I have an address. <laughs> Here's Ryan Braun leading off. First ball swinging. He fouls it away. Now, Bob Euchre threw out the first pitch tonight. And uh, with the Indians in town, it made sense to do a major league night here at the ballpark, honoring Euchre's 60th season. And uh, yeah, he's all smiles here today. Did a bunch of interviews and saw him on MLB Network earlier today with Chris Rose and Kevin Millar. He was great, as always. You Very wouldn't fun. expect anything else. Had a nice pitch on the first pitch. At least he got it there. He threw it just a bit outside. As Braun not happy with the call of home plate umpire Brian Gorman. Braun strikes out for the second time. Seven Ks for Salazar. Here's the first pitch by Mr. Baseball. His son Bob, the catcher, and you knew it was going to be just a bit outside. <laughs> Bob said earlier today they asked him, How many times a day does somebody say to you, just a bit outside. He goes five. Yeah. Four of them by my wife. <laughs> He's got Robin Yelts in there with him. In the booth. Did you see Robin? I, did, I didn't see that. 
I must have missed that. I was distracted. Always good when a couple of Hall of Famers are hanging out. Oh, there he is. Oh, he's on the radio now. Yeah, Robin, uh, there. Raleigh Fingers is at the ballpark today. I thought that was Getty Lee for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure I tell Robin you said that. And Robin will say who? <laughs> He'll say who? I say he's a rock star. And then Robin is a rock star. Of course, he knows who he is. I wonder how Joe Block's involved in this conversation. You know, when you when you have two Hall of Famers in there, what? I think you sent him home. Protocol is pretty much to just kind of slip off to the side, right? Oh, there's there's another Hall of Famer in the booth. I just said that. Raleigh's in the ballpark. Did you say something? Wrong? Yeah, I hear you. And Jeff Levering. No Joe Block sighting. <laughs> Three Hall of Famers in the same booth. As Lynn strikes out. So back to back K's and now. Three consecutive strikeouts. There's Joe. There's Joe. Joe, this is a good time for you to take your headset off. Uh huh. <laughs> I mean, there's really not a whole lot to add to that, is there? You're best off just staying out of the way. <laughs> Blend in with the carpet. Right. Two outs. Here is Gomez. Four of the last five outs have been strikeouts for Salazar. Look out. Salazar throws one over the head of Gomez. Remember the little back and forth those two had at first base. Gomez was dancing off the base. He wouldn't go back to first. He forced Salazar to throw it over there. Might have had something to do with it. Yeah. This little game gamesmanship by Carlos. Not the first time or the last time that. You'll see that from Carlos Gomez. Well, if he hits one out, I promise he'll watch it. Strike right on the black. Good pitch. One and two the count. Salazar has really dialed it in. You know, he hasn't really had many poor moments in the game. I mean, he gave up the leadoff triple. Brewers got a run on a ground out. And then Segura just ambushed him, that two run homer. Well, he's been good. He's got the strikeout machine going right now. He has walked Gomez twice already. Now he's got him in a 3 2 count. I like that split finger pitch he throws. It's not really a classic splitter, but. More of a split change. It's a good pitch for him. The Brewers haven't really touched that pitch yet tonight. And he misses badly. So the third walk of the game for Gomez. Gomez is the only batter that Salazar has walked tonight. Eight strikeouts, three walks. Salazar has given up just two hits, a triple and a home run. Yep, and hit Ryan Braun with a pitch. Here's Ramirez. Wonder if he'll be swinging at the first pitch. He is, and he got in on his hands. Popped him up. Left fielder Brantley wants it, and that will retire the side. So Gomez walks. He's stranded at first. Three nothing Brew Crew as we head to the seventh inning.
In the spotlight tonight, our shining moments of the game, courtesy of Marshfield Clinic, getting in the double play for Matt Garza in the second, then again in the fifth inning. That was a 6-3 double play. This was the one that was most interesting with the shift on a 6-5-3 double play. Ramirez over there making it work. Three double plays, six shutout innings for Matt Garza. Yeah, Rock. nice job. He was able to, you know, command the strike zone pretty well. He was able to throw strikes. He Walked a couple of batters, and you know both of his walks came to Santana, the first baseman. And oddly enough, the three walks issued by Salazar are all going to Carlos Gomez. Well, you notice that double play by uh, Aramis. He's not used to having to take the ball out of his glove that quick. Third baseman glove a lot bigger than the middle infielder, so I had to find it. As Michael Blazik continues here in the seventh inning, Blazik has not pitched in the second half. It's been nine days. He pitched on the twelfth. Against the Dodgers, two thirds scoreless. He's on a stretch of six appearances without allowing a run. So Blazik will try to keep the shutout intact. Seventh inning from Miller Park. Three nothing Brewers on just two hits. They've made him count. RBI ground out by Lucroy. Two run home run, Gene Segura. And nothing but zeros. Since that Segura home run in the second inning with one out. I wonder how good the command is going to be for Michael Blazik. It's been nine days and. It relies on that command good location on the fastball the two breaking pitches that he has. And we'll see line in the left field that's trouble it's going to one hop up and out. Ground rule double. So Jan Gomes starts the inning with a hit. Cleveland has had their leadoff batter reach base now four times. And you see Gomes gets a fastball up out over the plate and able to hammer it over the head of Gerardo Parr and left. So leadoff double. Indians have had scoring opportunities in every inning. Except the first and really the sixth. They have stranded five, three double plays of uh, wiped out base runners. Bottom of the order here, Michael Bourne. They got the rookie Urshela do next. And then the pitcher spot, and certainly Salazar has thrown his last pitch down three nothing. Bourne bounced into a double play his last time up. A rare one. The first one he's grounded into all season. That was the first double play, the 4 6 3 double play in the second inning. And in that inning, Cleveland had two on and nobody out. Fly ball out, and then the double play to get Garza out of it. It's a good comeback for Garza. He's got to feel great about. Coming back and uh, a shoulder injury, fatigue in the shoulder, shuts it down. Mm -hmm. Missed just one start. And uh, yeah, was able to keep the baseball in the ballpark. That's been an issue for he and Kyle Loesch this year. Loesch will get the ball tomorrow against Cody Anderson. Indians are rolling out two of their young starting pitching horses in this series. 25 year old Salazar and the 24 year old Anderson tomorrow. Cleveland three games under. Fourth place in their division. They're already 11 back of Kansas City. But with a with a run they could certainly play their way into the wild card picture. Indians actually better on the road this year than they are at home 25 and 21 on the road. Go figure. Full count to Bourne. I guess the biggest challenge for the Indians right now is. Are they buyers or sellers They're They're under 500. 
with their starting pitching you feel like they could get on a run. Yeah. They're without Nick Swisher he's on the disabled list he was having a, a down year anyway he's coming back he's in a minor league rehab setting now as of yesterday has a knee injury. You know I guess it all depends rock if you're Chris Antonetti the general manager of the Indians you have to decide OK. Is this our window is the window closing after this year. And if it is then you maybe make a move. I think the Tigers are in the same boat. Yeah, not an old team though. They got some uh, veterans on their club but not old. I think they've got some time left. Swing and a miss. Blazik strikes out Bourne. I don't want a curveball. Well, that's a nice pitch. Well, the question is answered about his command going with a 3 2 curveball to get Michael Bourne. And it would have been a called strike, too. Right at the bottom of the strike zone and Bourne right over the top. And a big out for Blazik. Gets an out, and the runner at second does not advance. Here is Giovanni Urshela. Wild swing. That base hit he had in the fifth inning of Garza to lead off snapped an 0 for 10. He did line out his first time up, hit it hard. And 23 years old, Urshela. And and the other guy on the left side, 21, Lindor. They got some youngsters. Yeah, why not? See if he'll chase it. Michael Blazik pitching with a 3 nothing lead. Got a runner at second one away and a liner foul. A couple of breaking pitches slow the bat down then he went with the fastball and Rochelle way behind it. Maybe bounce that curveball again. Got the curveball, but he's able to foul it off. Rochella from Colombia. I'd say Edgar Renteria is the most productive major leaguer from Colombia. There's been a few. Wow, Lucroy really. Doing a job there to keep the runner at second base. That was a heck of a play by the Brewer catcher. Yeah, you got to get lucky, but you put yourself in position, you might be able to keep it close. This curveball bounces in front of home plate, you know, by about three feet, three, four feet. And that's a heck of a job by Luke. Not only does he block it, but he keeps Gomes at second. 2 2 the count to Urshela, batting ninth in the Indians' order. And it just missed. Looked like Brian Gorman had a little flinch, the home plate umpire, but it misses, and now it's three and two. Normally rookies get rung up on borderline pitches, but Fox yep. Tracks has that one outside. The eagle eyed umpire. So now three and two. And a drive in the right center field. That is down for a hit. Into the gap it goes. Urshela thinking about third, and he'll stop at second with an RBI double. First run of the game for the Indians, driven in by their eighth place hitter. Yes, yeah. 3 1 Milwaukee. Yeah, left that one out over the plate, and Urshela able to hit it hard out there. Just couldn't put him away with the curveball. Couldn't get it close enough. Watch where it ends up. Fastball wants it away. Ends up out away from him and drives it. 
that way. So Ursula has had a couple of good at bats tonight. A single left, now a double to right, and an RBI. And as the Indians announce their pinch hitter, David Murphy, a left handed batter, Craig Council will make the move to the bullpen and play matchup. So Blazing, after a long layoff, will exit. Two hits, three batters faced. And in comes Will Smith here in the seventh. The original light pilsner cheers it's miller time and by the wisconsin lottery reminding you to please play responsibly tightening up just a little bit here at miller park the indians get a run with a one-out double from their rookie third baseman giovanni urshela blazik giving up two hits and a run and a couple of doubles in the inning so three one is our score one away in the seventh inning. Here comes Will Smith to face David Murphy. Well, Will last, pit, last pitched on Sunday against the Pirates, a third of an inning. And he got a strikeout and gave up a hit. 47 strikeouts in 35 innings for Smith and a 180 earned run average. Now, Murphy, as a pinch hitter this year, is 8 out of 24. He's Francona's guy off the bench. He's had three homers off the bench this year and six runs batted in. Three of those eight hits as a pinch hitter homers. And another spinner in there for a strike. Well, and he's been pretty good against left handed pitching this year, hitting over 300. So he hangs right in there. Will Smith's got to keep the baseball down on him. One and two the count on Murphy. Yeah, see the way he's able to handle that fastball away. Those are the pinch hitting numbers. Obviously, Craig Council is not going by this year's numbers for the matchups because Murphy hits lefties and Smith has given up hits to lefties. 281 batting average for left handed hitters against Will Smith this year. And a swing and a miss. And there's the reason right there. The breaking ball can devastate those left handed hitters. And when you think about it, only your top tier left handed hitters are going to be in the game at this point against Will when he's in. So you get a good hitter, it's not really going to, you know, get pinch hit for. They are going to be able to have some success, but there's a good breaking pitch. That's what you have to do keep it down. Looks like he tried to pull it and look bad on it. And another left hander coming up. And a top tier left hander at that. Jason Kipnis with a runner at second. 3 1 Brewers. Kipnis is 2 for 3 tonight. 
Got a base open at first, and you've got a rookie on deck. Got to be careful here. This is one of the best hitters in the game right now, Jason Kipnis. Got him to chase. Came back with the breaking ball and looked like he took a little off that slider this time. That was down in the low 80s. He's got a curveball too, so every now and again he'll take a little bit off. Look more like a curveball. Still pretty good numbers for Kittness against lefties. Almost 270. Fastball strike. Caught the edge this time. Kipnis doesn't like that call. He's faced him before. Smith was with the Indians, or rather the Royals, when he faced the Indians. Kipnis 0 for 5 against him in his career. Big pitch. Tying run at the plate. We're in the seventh. And the 1 2 lays off the breaking ball. Now, now what do you throw? Keep it down there. If you're walking, so be it, right? Ursula. At second base. And a swing and a miss. He powered him up with a fastball. Will Smith, 94 mile an hour heat. Kipnis strikes out. Back to that case for Will Smith. And the inning is over. The Indians get just one. Three one Brewers stretch time at Miller Park. One lead against the Indians and Friday, July 31st, and another free shirt Friday at Miller Park. All fans in attendance to see the Brewers take on the Chicago Cubs will get a free t shirt courtesy of Experience Fitness. Great seats are still available at Brewers.com slash tickets. New pitcher is Zach McAllister. In a 3 1 Milwaukee lead as we head to the bottom of the seventh inning. Yeah, 36th appearance for McAllister. Big, tall right hander. Throws hard. A 3 0 2 earned run average. You can see the strikeouts 56 punch outs and just shy of 45 innings of work and only 13 walks. Danny Salazar gives up just two hits but gives up three runs. Segura. Played it two with one swing. That home run in the second inning. And the Brewers are thrilled to see Salazar out. 
Not too many hard hit balls. The only hard hit balls were Parr and Segura, and they both caught Salazar runs. Uh, Parra had a triple in the first, scored on a Lucroy ground out, and then that home run by Segura. Little chopper to third base, and it's played barehanded, no chance. Segura reaches on an infield hit. I think that ball was going foul. But Urshela, the rookie, not taking any chances, thought he could make a play. And Segura beat it, beat it out. Yeah, not too many guys quicker out of the box and getting to full strength. You're probably right. That would have blown foul. It was kicking that way. But Urshela thought he was going to be able to get him. Forgot who was running, and he beat it by a wide margin down there at first base. That's just an experience error. I mean, he's that he proved he can make that play. That's a great play. But it's the wrong base runner to do it. So an infield hit. First hit for the Brewers since Segura's homer in the second inning. Segura takes off and a low throw into center field. And Segura got caught on the ground. So a stolen base for Segura. He's at it quickly. Yeah, he got tangled up with Lindor at second base. He really couldn't see where that baseball was. And you know, by the time he saw him to center field, a little bit too late. That's a huge jump. Good throw, though, by Gomes, and he's going to be out. And right there, he's just trying to keep his hand on the bag and forgetting about the baseball. Ball beat him, but, you know, the throw bounced. Makes you wonder if he uh, didn't have a good grip, you know? Yeah. Had a change-up grip, maybe, the way it came out. Trying to be too quick. So now Jeanette with a chance to drive in a run as he fouls it back. Segura with an infield hit and a stolen base. Holmes throws very well, typically. Tough to run on. 43% coming in. Scooter is 0 for 2 tonight. Had a little half swing ground out back to the mound in the fourth. Shane Peterson is on deck. He'll pinch hit next, most likely. One power pitcher to another Salazar to McAllister. Inside three balls and a strike on Jeanette. And McAllister with a big fastball. He'll cut it. He's got a splitter. A lot of good arms in this uh, on this Indians pitching staff. They've got a terrific closer as well, Cody Allen. Try to avoid him. And Jeanette turns it around. A base hit. Coming in to score is Segura. Scooter Jeanette on a 95 mile an hour fastball delivers it to center field. And the Brewers lead four to one. Yeah, get that run right back. Boy, nothing takes it out of the opposition when you get the run back. Oh. Indians able to put one up in the top of the inning, but with nobody out, Scooter Jeanette able to bang one out of the reach of Kipnis at second. And there's a Badger mutual insurance run of the game, courtesy of Scooter Jeanette. RBI number 18. Got himself in a hitter's count, and he cashed it in. Segura having a nice night. Two hits, a stolen base, a homer, two runs scored. Shane Peterson pinch hitting. Takes a strike on a breaking ball. Peterson's been great off the bench. Five hits and 11 at bats and three runs batted in. That's a 455 average. Overall hitting over 300. Airing it out on his first fastball that he sees. Yeah, Peterson got a pinch hit double on Sunday to drive in a couple of runs. Yeah, three of his five hits are doubles coming off the bench.
Indians get a run in the seventh. The Brewers get one right back in their half of the seventh. And still nobody out with a runner at first. Peterson was off to a great start in Triple A, and uh, just one of those guys that has had a lot of success at the Triple A level, has hardly gotten opportunities in the major leagues. This is his best look yet, and he sends one back up the middle. How about him, Shane Peterson? Another pinch hit, base hit. And it's a single to keep the inning going. Two yeah. on, nobody out. Yeah, best thing that could have happened to the Brewers' offense is Danny Salazar getting pinch hit for it. That's the thing about the National League that Frank Conner doesn't have to worry about in the American League. You need offense, you take him out, a hot pitcher. And the Brewers getting some pretty good swings against McAllister. Brewers have three hits off McAllister, three batters faced. Only had two in six innings against Salazar. So now the hottest Brewer hitter, Gerardo Parra, two on, nobody out. A run is in. Double barrel action in the Francona bullpen. See Crockett, the left hander, probably getting ready for Adam Lind if he gets that far. Got the right hander up, Lucroy, Braun, Lind, do up. Brewers are playing good baseball right now. They've won 16 of the last 22 games. Going back into late June, this run started. So 10 games over during the stretch, 16 and 6. The council is at an even 500 as the Brewers manager since taken over for Ron Renneke. Only the Angels with a better winning percentage. No team in baseball has more wins. Then Milwaukee in this stretch. June 23rd, the date. Inside ball one to Para. Brewers come in 11 games under 500. That is primary goal number one to get to 500. And when you've been 20 under. That seems like a bit of a long shot, but that's the goal. That's what they've been talking about ever since council took over. Just try to play hard every night, give the home crowd something to cheer about, give them an experience, and see where you end up. But you got to get to 500 before mm -hmm. you can think about anything else. Yeah, with a win tonight, the Brewers will have 17 wins in 23 games. They had 17 wins in April and May combined. Well, you take away April. No, you can't, but I mean, this has been a pretty good ball club. Well, think about it. They were 21 games under 500 on June 21st. Exactly one month. Now they're 11 games under. A 5 and 17 start the month of April. So if you play every month 10 games over, you'll be all right. Right. <laughs> Too bad you can't just throw out one month. A mulligan month. Parra's hanging tough here with two strikes. Two on, nobody out. Fouls another one away. Well, McAllister is racking up a lot of pitches already. 
His next one will be pitch number 20 of the inning, and he has yet to record an out. Two and two. Para will see at least nine. He's one for three. Triple and a run scored in the first. Playing the role of run producer here, the Brewers' leadoff man. Outside ball three. Can't get that breaking pitch over Kenny. And the Brewers know it. Let's see if the Brewers take off. Maybe get something going here on a 3 2 pitch. Parra has been hot. Why not? Brewers have Jeanette at second base, Peterson at first. And he walked him. Great at bad by Parra. Ten pitch sequence, and now Terry Francona has got to make a tough call here. His reliever does not have an out. He's 22 pitches in, and he's on his way to get him. Bases loaded, nobody out, a run in, and McAllister fails to record an out. And the meat of the order coming up. Luke Croy, then Braun. And to the bullpen goes Francona. We'll take a timeout. First pitch offensively, Para with a triple, and then he would score on a Lucroy ground out, and then a big strike by Segura. Two run home run in the second inning, and just like that, it was three to nothing. Matt Garza goes six shutout after coming back from the DL, and thanks in large part to three double plays turned tonight. Garza pitch well, six shutout, had four strikeouts, and he's in line for the win. The Brewers giving up a run of the seventh. Blazik allowing a run, but Milwaukee getting it right back and threatening for more with the bases loaded and nobody out. And here is the next man up for Terry Francona, Ryan Webb. Yeah, last pitched on uh, the 17th against the Cincinnati Reds in a 6 to 1 loss. Gave up a run in an inning of work. And the telling statistic in this spot bases loaded, nobody out. Webb has inherited 10 runners, and seven of them have scored this year. That's not a very good ratio. Jeanette Peterson and Para, the three left handed hitters, all on base. Jeanette and Peterson with singles. Scooter had an RBI single. And Para walks on 10 pitches. Here is Luke Croy. 
That kind of a crossfire, tall right hand to Ryan Webb, a sinker and a slider. He's got to make sure he gets one up in the zone early in the count. Former Marlin Ryan Webb. Came up with the Padres and the Marlins last year with Baltimore. Yeah, big sink on that fastball. Webb was not on the Orioles postseason roster last year. They had a great pitching staff last year, specifically bullpen. First year with Cleveland. He's in a hot spot here. Bases full of Brewers. Luke Croy on the ground. And a play at the plate for out number one. Snap throw to first and out number two. Yeah, nice play by Salazar there. That ball looked like it was going to get tangled up with Luke Croy and able to pick it. A throw low throw by Gomes. But they're able to turn the double play. Six, two, three, double play. Yeah, right off the end of the bat tried to pull the breaking pitch and look at this play by Salazar at first. I should say Santana at first base. Not a very good throw by Gomes but Santana able to help him out. Ball came close to hitting Lucroy. Two big outs for Ryan Webb. So. Second and third with two outs for Ryan Braun. Who has had a tough night at the plate. He struck out twice and he was hit by a pitch. This is when you're looking for the old pick me up. Pick up Lucroy. Brewers have scored in this inning. RBI. By Jeanette drove in Segura who reached on an infield hit and then stole the base. Two and one to Braun. Well, the Indians will have two, three, and four in their batting order. Smith struck out Kipnis to end the last inning, had back to back K's to end the inning. So you'd like to get to the finish line without facing him again. You can do that. Still going to have to deal with Brantley, but he will not come up representing. A go ahead run as Braun grounds to Lindor. Low throw, and it cannot be played by Santana. Peterson scores. And an error on the rookie shortstop leads to another run. It's 5 1 Milwaukee. Yeah, a little lackadaisical on the throw by Lindor. He kind of threw it flat footed and short hopped his first baseman. And Santana not able to handle it. Yeah, kind of a Going through the motions throw over to first base. That was a tough pick for Santana. Couldn't handle it. They got to make those plays. So Francona will go back to his bullpen with Adam Lind coming up. He's got a left hander ready in the bullpen. Kyle Crockett and he'll make the call. We'll take a timeout.
Tonight's time of the game winner, Scott and Ards in Ashland, Wisconsin. If they call the Brewers in the next 24 hours, they get 40 Miller Lite beer pen tickets to a 2015 Brewers home game. So, for courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Lite. So, it'll be Kyle Crockett. Just his eighth appearance in the big leagues. And he's going to face Adam Lind as Francona plays matchup. First and third, two outs. Brewers have two in to make it 5 1. Yeah, third different time that Crockett's been with the Indians. He's spent most of the year down in Triple A. Kyle Crockett. One of two lefties down there, along with Zepchinski, who is their high leverage left hander. Crockett has some funky action, as you see. He is a bit of a nightmare against the left handed hitter, you would think. That top side at about 92 with a slider. You're probably going to see a lot of sliders to Adam Lind. He uh, stands tall, kind of slings it. A little sidearm action, making it a little bit tougher on left handed hitters. In there for a strike. You mentioned that high ERA in AAA, had an ERA over six, but uh, had been on a good run in AAA. Their AAA is in Columbus. So Francona with Hagedon going on the DL figuring let's give him a, a shot. Let's see if he can keep the streak alive. And that ball's ripped into left field. A base hit. Adam Lynn stays right on it. And a base hit RBI with two outs. Three runs in here in the seventh inning. Makes it 6-1 Milwaukee. Yeah, he's been pretty good lately against lefties. The batting average against left hand is starting to climb. Got the count in his favor at 2 1 pitch and hits it hard right down the middle of the fastball and hits it into left field for an RBI. Well, that air really opened the door. Adam Lynn coming up with a base hit against a left handed pitcher. Terry Francona is going to make yet another pitching change. We'll take a break. Only one of them earned actually, and it's 6 1 with two outs. Another pitching change. The fourth pitcher of the inning for Francona. Hey, a reminder that tomorrow the semifinals begin as Clint Dempsey and Team USA continue their quest for a second consecutive Gold Cup title against Jamaica. Coverage of the CONCACAF 
Gold Cup sponsored by Chevrolet begins 4:30. What? Central on Fox Sports One. Streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Hey, you're right. Cocky calf. <laughs> well done. Jeff Manship <laughs> is the new pitcher. Wow. We got called up on June 18th. The Manship, a sinker slider guy. Fourth pitcher used by Terry Francona this inning. And how about the results for the Brewers after Danny Salazar gets taken out? Well, we've still. Uh, then in this seventh inning, he went six. This bottom of the seventh, lasting a while. Three runs are in. The Brewers with four hits in the inning. Got RBIs from Jeanette and Lind. Other run came in on the air by Lindor. On the batted ball by Ryan Braun. The biggest difference between American and National League Baseball right here tonight. Having to take your pitcher out to get runs in the National League. Inning started with Zach McAllister. He goes, well, does he just goes a plus, does not retire a batter. He faced four batters, gives up three runs, one earned, three hits, three hits and a walk. All started with that infield hit by Segura. Which yeah. looked like it was rolling foul. All right. Gomez with a base hit. Rounding third, coming home is Braun. He'll score. Carlos Gomez with an RBI single. Seven to one, Milwaukee. Is there another pitcher down in that bullpen? Hope not. Everybody Francona uses is giving up hits. Carlos with a two out RBI single on base for the fourth time tonight. Three walks and a hit. And that was a breaking pitch. Manchin goes with the slider. Carlos waits back and knocks it into center field. And Indians have not got him out tonight. A lot to cheer about on that Brewers bench. What an inning. Four runs in. Now 7 1. And yet the Brewers. Are still down in the hit column. Indians have out hit the Brewers eight and seven. Yeah, seven runs on seven hits. Ramirez is 0 for 3. Two on, two out. Lynn now at second base with Gomez at first. Strike one and one. Nice homestand for the crowd here in Milwaukee. The Brewers haven't given them much to cheer about this year. Over 34,000 here at Miller Park tonight. Not a bad crowd for a Tuesday night. Well done. Inning started with a Bob Euchre, or the game started with a ceremonial first pitch. Ramirez to third. And that will end the inning. So the Indians use four pitchers. None of them fare all that well. Infield hit started it. Jeanette with an RBI. Peterson with a pinch hit. And after the double play, a costly error opened the door for more. Lyndon Gomez and a 7 1 Brewers lead.
seven to one as we head to the eighth inning. The Brewers get four in the bottom of the seventh. Only one of those runs was earned. Costly error by the rookie shortstop. But the Brewers come up big with some two out hitting. As promised earlier in the game, we have selected the Data Strong fan photo of the game. That's a good one. A little selfie action. Tweet your strongest fan photo to hashtag WISDataStrongFan for a chance to be featured in an upcoming broadcast. It's brought to you by T-Mobile. Good job, Nate Winters. Hernan Perez will come into play third base. Ramirez is done for the night. And here is Lindor to lead off. Neil Cotts is the new pitcher. You see his numbers. He continues to head that earned run average south. 341 right now for Cotts. And throwing the baseball extremely well. Cotts pitched on Sunday against the Pirates. Tossed a scoreless inning. Unscored upon in 18 of his last night of uh, 20 appearances. Check that 19 of 20. All right, he's hoping to make quick work of the Indians here in the eighth inning. Good chance for Council after a four run seven to get a few guys some work. That all star break gets you in a position as a manager coming out of it, especially if you're playing well like the Brewers are and pitching well. Where a lot of your relievers aren't getting in games. Do you think this is going to be a big series or at least today and tomorrow for Cotts and Smith, little left handers in that lineup for Cleveland? Well, Will Smith came on, did a great job, struck out two batters to end the inning. There's a swing and a miss, another strikeout. Luke Croy got a quick tag on Lindor to secure the K. And one away in the eighth. With Garza returning to the starting rotation, the starting rotation is getting very crowded, and Willie Peralta's due back soon. Sophia has more on that. Thanks, PA. Yeah, Willie Peralta making his second minor league rehab start tonight with the Double A Biloxi Shuckers. So in our Blaine's down on the farm, here's his line for tonight: five innings for him, just one run on three hits and five strikeouts. So he went. 74 pitches on 48 strikes and uh, Craig Council said there really hasn't been a lot of discussion what will happen with the rotation they were hoping to have a good outing from Peralta tonight and they'll make a decision about when he'll rejoin the club uh, here soon it's gonna be tough <laughs> <laughs> who are you taking out yeah I know who are you taking out yeah I tell you it's uh, this starting rotation has been terrific Kyle Los goes tomorrow Gars is back with a bang after a stent on the disabled list a little over two weeks six shutout tonight for Garza who is in line for the victory. One away from Michael Brantley. Well, sometimes these decisions take care of themselves. I mean the Brewers don't have to make a decision for what five days or so. Five, six days, and you never know. Injury. Maybe a trade. Who knows? That's why and they don't make any decisions until the last minute. There's still a possibility that uh, Peralta could make one more start in the minor leagues, which would buy him another week. And if you're. I don't think the Brewers are. They don't mind having Peralta take his time coming back. Because of where they are in the standings. You want to make sure he's healthy for sure. You don't want to have that thing cropping up again. But if you're Willie Peralta, you want to be back in the big leagues when you feel like you're ready. And I'm sure he feels like he's ready. So Brantley draws a walk with one away. And that'll bring up Carlos Santana, who will bat right handed. See that number on the Indians' sleeve there, number seven. That number is for or to honor the great Al Rosen, mm -hmm. who passed away this March at the age of 91. Not only was he a great player, as a matter of fact, he is the last. Cleveland Indian MVP 
He was also a great executive. With the Giants. I believe he was executive of the year. There's a base hit by Santana. Two on one away a walk and a single against Cots. Al Rosen was the MVP of the American League in 1953. Big part of their. Their franchise. Yeah, long long history in Major League Baseball and. Had some terrific players including the first base coach. He wasn't too bad Sandy Alomar. Yeah one of the. One of the great big man catchers. What's Alomar about six five. Yeah he's big dead, big guy. He's the one that started the uh, knee protectors you know those things that they have in the back of the legs they don't you don't see him much anymore. Yeah the cushions right that would. Kind of prop you up a little bit. Take the pressure off the knees. Not too many guys wear those things anymore. Not sure why. You still have knee problems rock. Never from all did. those years catching never did really no nope. just flexible huh. Used to be. <laughs> You're not into a squat that often these nah, days <laughs> hardly ever. <laughs> Maybe to pick up the dog or the granddaughter. Ground ball to Jeanette. He's thinking two. There's Segura. The turn in time. Another double play. The fourth of the night. Neil Cox gets out of it. 7 1 Brewers. Indians just a run Brewers seven big four run seventh inning for Milwaukee. Let's circle back a little bit and talk about Matt Garzog as we get set for Brewers live post game short of a real perfect game by definition. Could it have been any better today for him in the whole scenario the runs the defense the way just, he pitched? It, it actually turned out just what he needed. He needed something early in the game. He got the lead and he went out there and he made some big pitches talking about the double plays talking about getting head of hitters and having that little pitch count late in the ball game. Just what he needed to get back on track. Matt Garza pitched a good ball game. Hope to catch up with him. We sure will with Craig Council as well. Brewers line post game on the way as they go for four straight here at home Brian. All right Craig and Augie thanks looking forward to that. Sophia will be on the field in the clubhouse with interviews as well. Seven to one. And the new pitcher is Austin Adams. Terry Francona is plowing through his bullpen here tonight, trying to keep everybody fresh for the day game tomorrow. Yeah, still has three down there, including his closer. Austin Adams last pitched on the 17th against Cincinnati. Two thirds scoreless. 
There's a base hit. Gene Segura on the first pitch. Boy, what a night he's had. He's the player of the game tonight. Segura with three hits. He scored two runs, has a stolen base. Has shown his uh, speed and his power. That two run home run really set the tone for the night. Yes, it did. And it's a nice approach by Segura taking that pitch in the corner to right field. And Segura has been involved in all the double plays tonight. So defense, offense, he's stolen the base. Hit for power. Good night. Jeanette back at the plate. Had an RBI single his last time up, last inning. Brewers batted around in the seventh, scoring four runs. Only one of those runs was earned, but big two out hits after the error by Lindor. Ground ball, indoor backhands, goes to second for the out, the lead out. Good play by the rookie. And a fielder's choice for Jeanette. Pretty athletic out there. I mean, 21 years old and still has an awful lot to learn. You know, making sure of one, he knew he had some time. Kipton is able to get it. And get the lead out. Lindor. Forced into major league duty this year. I'm not sure the Indians had thought he would be up this fast, but Mike Avilas, who's with the club, but having some uh, personal struggles. His uh, young daughter is battling leukemia. As Adams misses high to Davis, Chris Davis pinch hitting here. So Avilas is back with the club. He's on the active roster. He's been a great pro, terrific shortstop, and good hitter. But my thoughts are certainly with him. This yeah. is, uh, it's got to be tough. Daughter goes through a tough battle. Matter of fact, uh, the Indians and a lot of their front office staff and personnel all shaved their head along with Mike to show support for his daughter. That was a really beautiful moment. Nothing worse than having to deal with that with the kids, huh? Davis fouls it away, a ball and two strikes. I think with the fact that Avilas is kind of in and out, and you can understand why, and it was the right time to bring Lindor up. He was playing well. And big league ready defensively. He is their top prospect. And here he is at 21, playing every day. Did have a costly error. Last inning that opened the door. Davis pops this one up. He was off balance. And there is out number two. Austin Adams. Two outs for Gerardo Parra. Brewers are going to see the Indians again in Cleveland progressive field in uh, late August. It's a road trip that begins in Washington D.C. against the Nationals. As Para lines one to center field and that's going to go all the way to the wall. This is going to bring in a run. Harada Para on his way to third with his second triple. RBI for Para. Hit that like a bullet. 8 1 Milwaukee. Yeah, it seemed like it took Michael Bourne forever to get over there. This ball uh, spent a lot of time on the ground, still able to get by Michael Bourne. And Scooter Jeanette scores and Para into third base. I think they had. Parra shaded around toward left a little bit. That's why it took him so long to get there. And now eight to one Brewers. Brewers now with a seven run lead. That ball hit the grass and just shot to the wall. And if the speedy Michael Bourne can't cut it off, then it can't be cut off. RBI triple, eight one Brewers. Here's Luke Croy. Strike one. Harada Parra with two more hits. 
He had two triples all season coming into play tonight. He has two triples tonight. And a walk. Chopper to short. Lindor waits back. And the throw is low again. Scooped by Santana to end the inning. Well, a big late rally for the Brewers. Those tack on runs. Arana Parra. Two more hits tonight. Double plays have been the big story defensively tonight. Matt Garza went six shut out. Induced three double plays. And then Neil Cox just got the fourth of the night in the eighth inning. 8-1 Eight Brewers, a four-run seventh. They added one in the eighth. Gerardo Parra has two triples. Gene Segura has three hits and a two-run home run. And the Brewers trying to stay hot, trying to win their 17th game in the last 23 played. Going to 17 and 6 over the last 23. Yeah. Here's Corey Knebel. Well, if he's going to be a little bit rusty, you got to give him a break. He hasn't pitched since July 6th against the Atlanta Braves, so it's been a while for Corey Knebel. And then he's going to get the ninth with a seven-run lead. First pitch is an out. Jan Gomes he got sent down on July 2nd, then got called right back up on the sixth. And hasn't pitched since. Good time to get in there and get some work. Yeah. Figure the Indians are up there hacking and trying to get to the finish line. This was a tight game. The Indians scored a run in the seventh inning to make it 3 1 and had the tying run at the plate. Will Smith came on to. Strike out Murphy then Kipnis to end the inning. Had those two strikeouts with a runner at second. And then the Brewers got four after a costly error by the Cleveland shortstop. Good curveball is good sign for Corey Knabel. One thing you love about Knabel, he works fast. He knows, especially in a game like this, it's imperative to keep things moving. He's got a he's got a motor high motor. He wants to get the ball and get going. Throws a lot of strikes not afraid to pitch contact. And what you like about a lot of these young Brewer pitchers that have come up. Brewers got Knable in that deal with Texas for Gallardo. With two others and uh, now rumors are the Rangers may be looking to move Gallardo. Maybe trading him. Wow. Right down the heart. Michael Bourne is out. 
two quick outs for Corey Knebel. Seven pitches, five of them for strikes. No television tomorrow. Our Miller Lite What's on Tap. You'll have to catch that one on the Brewers Radio Network. Kyle Loesch against Cody Anderson, the 24-year-old young talent for the Indians. Off to a good start. Tried down to their last out. Giovanni Urshela. Rock will see you again on Thursday in Arizona. First of a four game series with the Diamondbacks is our next telecast. Yeah, it's going to be nice and toasty down in Phoenix. You like the heat, though. Oh, right? I'm all in. I'm all in. Easy to get loose. That's it. Canable strikes out Urshela to end the ball game. If there's rust, it didn't show. How about nine pitches, eight strikes, and two strikeouts? Gene Segura, big night tonight. A home run, a two run shot. Three hits had a stolen base, two runs scored. Matt Garza returns from the disabled list. Those six shutout innings and wins for the fifth time this year. Eight won the final. Craig Kishon ready to go. It is time for Brewers Live. Take it away, Craig. Well, plenty to talk about here tonight. Offense of 24 Milwaukee. And how about the double plays? We'll talk about Augie's best friend, the double play. Also hear from Craig Council and the Brewer, and we come back to Brewers Live.